the only coach Arlington Lamar has ever had, Eddie Peach, in his 21st season, definitely wants a state championship. This would be his first. Offensively, the Vikings have a slew of weapons, including heralded quarterback Tony Kennedy, who has run the option to perfection all season. When Kennedy isn't running for big yardage, he's hitting his receivers with pinpoint accuracy. And no other team in the state can boast a running back any more talented than Sean Walters, who has electrified the Arlington Lamar faithful every time he touches that football. On the defensive side, the Vikings have been stingy all season, boasting a football that absolutely pulverizes the opposition. This is one of the finest defensive units in all of high school football. Hey, it's no wonder the Arlington Lamar faithful are excited today. The Aldine Mustangs were in the state 5A title game last year, but in Irving's Texas Stadium in six-degree weather, Aldine fumbled away a chance to win the crown against eventual national champion Odessa Permian. But now the Mustangs are back and riding high. Aldine has a terrific ground threat in senior Derek Johnson, who combines strength with blazing speed. He's very familiar with the opposing team's end zone. And Aldine quarterback Eric Gray can throw the ball with the best of them. He has several outstanding receivers, but oh, can he fly when he runs with that football, too. Another reason most national high school polls have Aldine in the top spot is the Mustangs' blown, crushing defensive unit. the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, Arlington, Lamar, and Aldine to decide who's the best in the Lone Star State. TVG Sport presents 1990 Texas 5A High School Football, the championship game from the eighth wonder of the world, the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Two outstanding high school football teams, the Arlington, Lamar Vikings against the Houston, Aldine Mustangs. The Lamar fans have traveled a long way to see their Vikings play football here this afternoon. Can they win their first ever state championship? And right across town, Aldine fans have come to the Dome to see if their team can win it all in 1990. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Fallon and joining me is Scott Murray where we have for you today as exciting a high school football game as you'll ever see. In the state of Texas, we pride ourselves with tremendous high school football. And I do believe, Scott Murray, that we've come up with two of the best teams in the state. Well, you know, Steve, you talk about a, a championship game like this, you talk about two teams that are 14-0, both unbeaten, both have gone through their districts and done well. But I think the key to the whole thing here today is the fact that you've got number one against number two, and this is something they've worked on since September. And now it all comes to this, and it's so exciting to think that one of these teams will make history because neither one of these clubs has ever won a state title until today. And, of course, this game has national implications as well because of the fact that Aldine is ranked in most polls number one in the nation. Let's go down to ESPN's Adrian Karsten on the Astrodome carpet with some further words about this ball game today. Thank you very much, Steve. All of America is about to find out just how big high school football is in the state of Texas. Aldine has been ranked number one in the state of Texas through this could be the best high school football team in the country. On the other side of the field, Arlington Lamar comes in with perhaps one of the best offenses in the country. When you talk about Arlington Lamar offense, you have to look directly in the backfield. They've got one back. You don't have to guess about who's going to get the ball. Sean Walters. Let's take a look at some of Sean's numbers. He has put up over 2,200 yards this season. Take a look at the fact that he has had uh, close to 30 touchdowns, averaging almost seven yards per carry. If he gets the ball around the corner, that big Aldean defensive line is going to have their hands full, literally. Taking the snap for Aldean or rather for uh, Arlington Lamar, is Tony Kennedy, a great option quarterback, as we saw earlier on, with a huge offensive line. These guys average about 255 pounds per man. They give him plenty of time to decide whether he wants to run first or throw second. Bill Coates from Dallas, you know this Arlington Lamar team very, very well. What does Aldean really have to be concerned about most today? Well, mostly I would think uh, Sean Walters, Adrian. He has been a man among boys this year. Nine Arlington and uh, Lamar high school records. He has five 200-yard games. What a great find he was. He moved into that district about two days before two-a-days began. So manna from heaven from Arlington Lamar. He's a great football player. Tony Kennedy is the trigger man. He and uh, Walters are both juniors. He has thrown 121 passes this year, only one interception and 10 touchdowns. 
That's what you call efficiency. I would think one of the big keys today, defensively for the Lamar team, how well they play this Haldane option. Bill, we've got to take a look at how Lamar got here in the first place. Last week, they took it uh, up against Carter. They scored 28 points, not really to be considered an upset, but they've scored close to an average of 25, 30 points in the playoffs thus far. Earlier this morning, we had an opportunity to talk with Coach Peach. He's concerned about Aldean to a degree. He has confidence in his, own, in his own team. This is what he had to say earlier this morning. Well, I, I think the, the big thing is offensively, we've got to be able to move the sticks. You know, I, I didn't say score points. I said uh, make first downs. And uh, our defense is so small, and Aldean's offense is great that we can't have our defense on the field all the time. They can't go out there five or six minutes and, and then – we go out there offensively and go three downs and have to punt the football. Uh, there's, their defense is so good that we're going to get a lot of third and fours and third and fives and third and sixes, and we've got to be able to convert those situations in order to keep the football our share of the time. And we'll take a closer look at the Mustangs right after this. Geographically, they have not had to travel far. Just from the other side of Houston, the Aldean Mustangs are here to avenge last year's championship loss, their last loss in this 14-0 campaign against Odessa Permian. It's the defense that has taken them down this long road here to the State 5A championship. But you cannot discount the fact that Eric Gray runs a very potent offense. He can run and he can throw. Let's take a look at some of his numbers. When he does decide to keep the ball, he can put up some very impressive numbers. He's a very patient, very poised quarterback. Take a look at him. When he comes to the offensive line, he takes his time, more like looking like a college quarterback than anything else. Derek Johnson, his man in the backfield, big and strong at almost 200 pounds. He will punish that Lamar defensive line given the opportunity. He may carry the ball 23 times today. Let's bring in Ken Rodriguez from Channel 39 here in Houston. What about Aldine? Their defense is most talked about, Ken, but they've got a few other concerns. Adrian, of course, uh, defensively is going to be the key for Aldine. They're going to have to stop that big offensive line of Lamar, and they're going to have to rely heavily on one of the state's top prospects in number 76, Steve Strahan. He's 6'2", 275 pounds. He's going to have to have a big game for Aldine today. He's a big horse on that line. We were talking with him yesterday. Ken, let's take a look at just how Aldine got here. Last week, they put up 54 points on the board against Mission. Now, yeah, they talk about their defense, but can they score 54 points today? Do they have to to win? I don't think they have to to win. Again, defense is going to be the key, but they're going to have a great game out of Derek Johnson. He's a game-breaker, averaging over eight yards a carry and uh, averaging well over 100 yards a game. He's had 1,500 yards this year. Look for him to have a big game for them. Coach Bill Smith is proud of his offense and his defense. He's got some concerns over about Lamar. His name is Sean Walters. He's also got some thoughts about the game right at the line of scrimmage. Well, they play a one-back offense, so obviously if there's one back back there, there's not a lot of question if they want to run a running play, which one's facing to get it. But that's not the whole scheme. They, they have a good blocking scheme. They uh, misdirect uh, by starting him one way and pull and trap and do all that sort of thing. It's not something we haven't seen. We've seen that. Uh, it's a matter of playing. It's a matter of not getting knocked off the line of scrimmage. It's controlling the line of scrimmage. And if we can do that, then we can play. If we can't do that, it's going to be a long game. Well, there's no question but that there are going to be a lot of outstanding high school football players involved in this game here this afternoon. A lot of those players you'll see in the college ranks. Some of them may move on to the professional ranks on down the road. And let me tell you something. You can help us out here this afternoon as we watch these two great teams play high school football for the 5A championship. We want to invite all our viewers in helping select with TVG Sports this year's most outstanding Texas high school football player. Here's what you have to do to participate. Call 1-900-420-5333 using a push-button telephone and vote for who you think is this year's most outstanding player. Now, you can vote as many times as you like. TVG Sports has selected five young men from around the state who have performed remarkably for their respective schools. Let's meet them right now. Number one is senior Lewis Fight from Waco High. This running back under Coach Tusa ran for 2,532 yards and 26 touchdowns, averaging eight yards a carry. He had one 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Number two is senior Joseph Onofre, the all-district 28-5A quarterback from San Antonio Holmes. This fall, Joseph passed for 1,722 yards and 17 touchdowns. Number three is Irving MacArthur's senior quarterback, Bob Aylesworth. 
Under Coach Overton, Bob threw for 2,679 yards and 23 scores. He was selected offensive co-MVP for District 6-5A. Number four, senior running back Eric King of Houston Walter High School. Under Coach Barron, Eric averaged over seven yards a carry. Eric also started as quarterback and offensive back at various times during the fall. And finally, number five from San Angelo High, junior quarterback Shea Morris. Under Coach Valley, Shea threw for 2,555 yards and 18 touchdowns. Shea also rushed for 511 yards. He was the offensive MVP for District 4, 5A. Each call is 95 cents, and a portion of the charge is going to a scholarship fund of the Winters High School. Now, kids, be sure to get your parents' permission. We'll keep you posted on your voting throughout today's game. Again, call 1-900-420-5333. We'll have the kickoff right after this message from our local station. The 1990 Texas 5A High School Football Championship is brought to you by your local Pepsi Cola bottler, the choice of a new generation. Geo, get to know Geo, available right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealer. Hotel accommodations provided by Accommodations Hotels, Sheridan and Holiday Inn. The destination for the very best in Houston is located across the street from the world famous Astrodome. Call 1-800-627-6461 for reservations. Now the regular 5A championship game ready to get underway. The visiting team, the Arlington Lamar Vikings, have won the toss, selected to receive. There's Eddie Peach again in his 21st season. The only head coach in Lamar history in his first state championship game. He is fired up, and I'm sure his players are too, ready to receive that football as the All-Dean Mustangs will be kicking things off. And Scott Burry, I think we're going to see an outstanding game this afternoon. I know Alex Amaya, the kicker, is pumped for All-Dean. He's ready to get this thing off, and we are underway as it has been teed up at the 40-yard 40 40 line. To the 30-yard line, cutting to the far side of the field. We've got a nice run back underway, and a lost football recovered by, it looks like, Art for Lamar. I think Lamar has it. Up at the 37, Danny Davenport jumped on that football and saved it. This has certainly got to be one of the keys this year, is they've got to hold on to the ball. And we talk about Aldean last year against Odessa Birmingham. They fumbled six times in the title game. And now here on the opening kick -in. off they've already coughed it up again. Tank Stratford is the young man who caught the football on the opening kickoff. And again, uh, as he tried to turn the corner on the far side, Scott, describe it for us. He just lost that football. Well, he did. He really got some, some good running room around the far side. And in there for uh, Lamar, I think it was Danny Davenport, the senior strong safety, who picked up the fumble recovery. So suddenly, instead of finding themselves uh, on defense, they find themselves on offense. So here's Tony Kennedy ready to get things underway for his Arlington Lamar Vikings. This guy has run for over 1,000 yards. He's also passed for over 1,000 yards. An outstanding quarterback is Tony Kennedy. And Lamar coming to the line of scrimmage with that one back set. Pitts coming to the near side. And with the football is John Walters. Walters hit hard by the old defense. And again, folks, this all Dean defense may be a bit underrated. That was linebacker Marcus Allen, 205-pound senior, who made the hit. He's highly recruited, runs a 4-6 speed in the 40. Not bad. Well, you see the uh, starting offensive backs for the Vikings, Kennedy, and Walters. Those are the people that you're here from most of the afternoon. McGarrahan, a good blocker, used mostly as a blocker. And, of course, the big group up front, that offensive line that is almost as big as the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. Huge group up front. Here we go with the second down play. Kennedy wants to throw the football. It's caught by the big tight end, Scott Waterbury. And he's loose all the way down to about the 45. Well, I think he got inside the 40 to the 39-yard line before he was run out of bounds by Carl Heathman on the far side of the field, the free safety right there. There's no question about it, Scott Arlington. Lamar can hit you both ways with Tony Kennedy. Waterbury is such a big kid and such a good kid. If you look on the... Uh, 
on the stat sheet already this year. He's got 11 receptions for 209 yards and three touchdowns. So he uh, he's the big tight end, 6'4", 245 pounds, a high school senior. First and 10 from the Aldi 39-yard line. Walters again, straight up the middle. The offensive oh, line gives him lots of running room, and he's down to the 33. The four linebacker Wesley George could hammer him down. Well, Scott, there's no question. We talked about it as the game got ready to begin that LaVar's offensive line would be a key. And now it's up to those youngsters. The boy Johnson, Steve Strahan, Urban Ryland, Chris Allen, Marcus Allen, Wesley George, John Lacey to somehow slow down that offensive front. Kissa, Mark, Williams, Heathman are the defensive backs. Here comes the second and short play. Four to be exact again from the Aldi 33-yard line. Walter gets the first down. Fine pickup before John Lacey brings him down. First down, Arlington Lamar. This was one of the concerns this year, as you see the beautiful block by Mike Haney, number 79, leading the charge there for Lamar. And suddenly, uh, Lamar finds itself first and 10, almost to the 20-yard line. Sean Walters, 220-pounder. First and ten, gets the call again. This time, all is all over it. Well, I think the Mustangs smelled that one out. The boy Johnson, the left end, only 185 pounds, but, boy, he is hound dog savage. Makes the tackle on the play. Scott, we've seen what we talked about earlier on, the fact that Lamar's going to run right at you. They really do, and that's ex exactly what they'll continue to do all afternoon. One of the things that concerned Eddie Peach that made them so successful just a week ago against Carter was the fact that they could convert on third down. They haven't had the third down here yet. Second and 10 now from the 21-yard line. Kennedy wants to throw again, has his man again. The ball is down at the 12-yard line. James Tucker coming into this one. Tucker had 47 catches for 621 yards and seven touchdowns. Picks up good yardage there before Larry Kissam, the left corner, makes the tackle on the play. But again, Kennedy, two for two, through the air. Tucker on the right side of your screen with a nice move, just kind of pulls away from him. He's a leading receiver with the Vikings this year. And that is the third first down now on this drive for Arlington Lamar. We're going to take our best. We're going to put him against your best on that line of scrimmage and see who wins. And right now, Arlington Lamar is ahead in the scrimmage. Kennedy keeps straight ahead and gets a little bit of yardage. Maybe enough hit in for the first down. Well, the linebacker and Scott having to do a hard day's work already for Aldine because... It seems like the running backs and now the quarterback, Tony Kennedy, get through that first line of defense and the linebackers have to collapse and make the tackle. No problem there, right up the middle. That's just beef against beef. And first and goal from the eight-yard line. Walker almost hit. He is in the backfield and finally goes down to the 15-yard line. A double whammy from Wesley George and Reggie Davis. Gary Martin's also putting on pressure, so Old Ian getting tough in four-down territory. Most of the time, you're going to see Walters go inside. He's got the size, he's got the strength, but when he comes around the outside here, if you look on the left side of your screen, he really doesn't have much place to go. Kind of slows him down, and then the 44 just makes a tackle there. Reggie Davis is the man who made that stop finally, and so it's a loss on the play. Takes it back to the 13-yard line. Second and goal from that point. Third pass of the day, incomplete. Kennedy finally tries to complete uh, a pass and misses. Misfires to Chris McGarahan, who had come in in the slot formation. DeAndre Sanders, strong safety there defending on the play. But now Kennedy's first missed pass, two for three, brings up third and goal. Well, Scott, I, I suppose on a third and long like this, we're going to see Kennedy have to throw, huh? I would imagine so. We've got a great ratio of touchdowns to interceptions. Here we go, big third down play. Kennedy on the option, looks under pressure, and that should be an incomplete pass. At the 20-yard line, the boy Johnson strips the ball, but only after, and I think I'm right on this, I, I thought Kennedy had thrown in forward motion, so I think it's just an incomplete pass. Now, as far as, uh, well, here it is again. You watch, you'll see that his arm is in movement. Play action takes a look, and just as he gets it going in forward motion, he's hit from behind. 
and that's a big boy Johnson. And that's a real big play, too. Brings on Robert Partridge, who's going to have to punt the football away. And he hasn't missed yet this year. Oh, he's going to try field goal. I'm sorry. Seven of seven this year. From the 21-yard line. He makes it eight of eight. Mr. Partridge puts the visiting team, Arlington Lamar, on the scoreboard first. With 7.37 to play, there is no score. We'll be right back. Five foot nine inch, 170 pound junior Robert Partridge with his eighth field goal of the year. Boy, he's perfect. Eight of eight. Scott, former Black Arlington Lamar, gets first blood here. Robert's a former soccer player. He grew up in the Arlington soccer system and switched to football a couple of years back. But uh, he's been a sidewinder for a long, long time. Just a little guy, but he certainly gets the job done. And now Partridge will kick it off with Elmer Brown and Will Skinner back to receive. Fumbled football back at the 10-yard line. It's loose in the end zone. Recovered by Aldean in the end zone. And for just a moment, I thought that we were going to see Lamar recover in the end zone, and that would have been a touchdown. Boy, we've already seen so many big plays by Arlington Lamar. They came out smoking, huh, Scott? They really did. This is, of course, what they've been known for all year long. It's the old motto, 11 men to the ball, and that's normally what they do. But the one concern this year is the fact that the option is run so successfully by, by Aldine that they really uh, they're a little concerned right now if they're going to be able to contain it. Number 15 is Gary Martin. He's the guy that lost the football. So now Aldine has it first and 10 from its own 20-yard line. Fullback with the call gets up to the 25 yard line. That was Reggie Davis, 205 pound senior. He'll get the carry every every now and again, but of course Derek Johnson's their big guy. And all day in offensively going with uh, Eric Gray, Derek Johnson, Reggie Davis in the backfield, the tight end Travis Bedford. Oh, is he a good one? Chris Bonner, Eric Stevens, both outstanding wide receivers. And there's your front line with Jordan Gaines, Coleman, Prudholm, and the Childers. Six-yard pickup a moment ago by Davis. Second and four. One of the best option teams in the state. Here's the option pitch. And running him out of bounds up at the 27-yard line. Billy Coates knocking Derek Johnson to the wayside. And I guess, Scott, we need to let our listeners know that our own broadcast partner, Billy Coates, is not suited up and playing. He's out of high school eligibility. That's, all, that's another Billy Coates. All right, third and one. From the 29-yard line, as Lamar defensively going with Brady. Well, you saw that group. There's Baker, Coach, Davenport, and Reed. There in the defensive secondary. Option keep coming to the near side, getting the first down. And the yardage is quarterback Aaron Gray as Billy Coates, the right corner, right him out of bounds. But Gray, who has run for 1,156 yards this year, and scored a whopping 24 touchdowns overall with his passing yardage, passing TDs included, getting the first down there. So, Scott, we see immediately that Aldean is not having trouble moving against Arlington's defense. Now, I think uh, th this was the main concern of Arlington's coaches, the fact that they would be able to contain this situation. Down the 43, pitch right side. Down he goes at the 39, maybe the 40-yard line. Derek Johnson with nowhere to go because Jim Brady, 6'5", 195-pound junior, was right there. He's the team's leading tackler. Coming into this ballgame has 130 of them. Johnson, of course, is the man that they were concerned about. And one of the things that was really of concern to, to Eddie Peaches who watched the replay is the fact that they didn't have anybody quite as fast as Johnson and they couldn't duplicate this option this week in practice. They would go through the motions and what have you. But when you've got somebody as quick as Johnson, they really couldn't duplicate it to practice and practice it as well as they'd like to. Second and 13. David blocked the throw. Well, now run. Oh, he's got great speed as he turns it to the outside. He could go all the way. One man to the other. The 25-yard line in Arlington Lamar's territory. Coates and Brandon Baker finally running down. But I think Scott, we saw right quickly there that Eric Gray has tremendous option speed. I don't know if we get a chance to see it on the replay or not, but watch how quickly he sets up and then just takes off. 
Watch number 19. He still has the ball. Play action, and then just cut. He's got wide open, and then he just out sprints everybody. A couple of nice moves, and just heads down that far sideline. And so now, Aldine has it first and 10 from Lamar's 25-yard line. Full back straight ahead, Reggie Davis inside the 20. He'll be stopped at about the 18-yard line. Good support defensively by Arlington Lamar as Jim Brady, the linebacker, comes up and helps sling Davis, Gilbert, and Carrick along that front line. But it's still a pickup of about six yards. And as big as that offensive line is of Lamar's, the defensive line is very small. Ling, the only fellow over 200 pounds on that defensive front four of Lamar. We saw Bill Smith squatting on this second and fourth play. Straight ahead again goes Reggie Davis. Stopped by Eric Starks, 5'10", 150-pound sophomore linebacker for Arlington Lamar. I'm a bit surprised. By the way, that's another first down. I'm a bit surprised, Scott, that Aldine is going with Davis more than Johnson here in the opening stanza. Well, here again, we'll get another look at it. Davis is number 44. They might be just trying to uh, change it up a little. I think everybody expected Johnson or Gray to carry the ball for the better part of the ball game. And by throwing Davis into the mix, it, uh, it shakes up Lamar a little more. And this is one of the concerns with that option is to cut down those alleys. And they really aren't maybe a little tentative at this point as to who they might be going for. That's a good point, Scott. Certainly Arlington Lamar right now, as they regroup defensively, trying to determine how to stop that option play. And, and Scott, you said a little bit earlier on that uh, Lamar really hasn't played that many option teams this year. No, they haven't. At one point, they played about five run-and-shoot teams. They've played a couple of variations of the veer, but to play an all-dean-type option, they have not done this. And we've got two fellas like uh, like Gray and Johnson, and then, as we said, you add Davis into the mix. That's uh, that's that's awful tough. Lamar, with that 3 nothing lead, took the opening kickoff, drove it downfield, stalled, and then got the short field goal. And so we have a tie score. And we'll be back right after this message from our local stations. Astrodome, it's 3-0, Arlington Lamar leading all day, but the Mustangs driving, and Scott, as we look at a comparison of the two schools, looks to me like uh, Lamar has had more success defensively, all day, more success offensively this year. And offensively on the ground, I might add. Already seven plays from scrimmage, all seven on the ground for all as they try and take it in for six just outside the 10-yard line. From the 13-yard line, first down, again, it's Reginald Davis. Pushes his way down to the five. Big pile there, led by Jim Brady, 6'5", 195-pound senior. Again, you're going to hear us call the name of Brady almost all game long because he leads this team in tackles. He's a Super Bowl player. Here's another look at it, just right up the middle. Great leg drive, but tremendous leg drive. Lamar finally wraps him up and back to live action. Second and three. From the six-yard line. Now, they can get it to the three, get another first down. But it looks like Davis walks in the end zone. Touchdown, Aldi! Jonathan Reed got his arms around him, but Reggie Davis said no way, and in he went. Well, that's got this all Dean partisan ground pumped a little bit, huh, Scott? Well, Jonathan Reed is the fellow that really kind of runs that uh, defensive uh, backfield of Lamar. That's the fellow that uh, Eddie Peach was kind of counting on. He said he's much matter of fact, this week he mentioned to me he's got to be the one to tackle well. He's got to prevent the big play and make sure that he covers those alleys. And unfortunately, that tackle, he came up a little short. And as a result, all the time to take on top of seven three. That was Amaya who got the point after. And we have four minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the opening quarter here in the Dome. And again, it is Aldine on top by a 7-3 score after this touchdown by Reggie Davis. Lamar penetrated from that left side a little too much, almost overran the play. That left Davis open. He had one man to beat. Now watch number 13 in white on the left side of your screen. Hey, right there, he, he, just, he just can't bring him down. Davis is 6'2", 210. And Jonathan Reed is all of 5'8", 175 pounds. There's just no way. Big fella, happy fella, as he slaps hands with his tight end, Travis Stetford. That's number 87 to the left of your screen. 
And there's a gentleman not too thrilled right now, Coach Eddie Peach of Arlington Lamar. Again, with 4.42 to go in the first quarter, our score, Maldean 7, Lamar 3. We'll be back after these messages from our local station. Well, you just know everybody here. Okay, uh, guys, I'm with Valerie Gray, the mother of quarterback Eric Gray of Maldean. Valerie, all week, all week long, Eric's been real cool at practice. What did he like at home? He's been all right. He's not, he wasn't too nervous, but he was still nervous about this game today. All right, what about yourself? Yeah, but I know we're going to win. All right, they're up 73. Up to you guys. Confidence than your mother's. The mother has so much confidence in the sun, and the sun is playing very well right now. Indoors here in the Astrodome, there is no sun, but it's awfully warm around the next of Arlington Lamar. They find themselves trailing 7 to 3. Here's the kick by Amaya from the fourth. Stratford will take it. Remember, he fumbled the opening kickoff earlier. Nowhere to go there as he sit at the 43 yard line by two or three defenders, led by Antonio Singleton, 185 pound junior for Aldean. And now it's up to Tony Kennedy and company to. Try to match the output by Aldean here a moment ago. And Scott, there's no question in my mind, but both of these teams know how to move that football. Well, this is the concern now for Eddie Peach, the head coach at Lamar. He said earlier this week, what we've got to do is we've got to maintain possession. We've got to move the change. We've got to get it downfield. Keep our defense off the field as much as possible. From the 23, that's Walton, who's nowhere to go. Boy, that Aldean defense is so tough. What about the offense? Nine plays, 80 yards. Took almost three minutes off the clock. And then the touchdown run by Davis. To put the Mustangs up, 7-3. All on the ground. And that's what you'll see the better part of the afternoon for the Aldi Mustangs. They pass very rarely. Block rolling. As Scott said, with it on the ground. Aldi doing extremely well. The clock's still rolling. Now to close to the four-minute mark. Second and nine, pick up of one by Walters just a moment ago. And he wants to throw. He's two or three from the air. Well, he's won't throw this time. He's sacked back at the 15-yard line, maybe the 16-yard line. Steve Strahan and Strahan and Urban Dryley right there to make the tackle on the play. I mean, between those two guys, they have 16 sacks. And Strahan, well, he's just a Super Bowl player. Has just about every major college in the country looking at him. And this guy's back for another year. Yeah, he, he was close to set earlier this week when he lost out the Houston Touchdown Club and Defensive Player of the Year award. He said, I'm on a, man, a mission. I'm a man on a mission. I lost out for that award. I want the ring. I want that championship ring coming up Saturday afternoon. Well, he's playing like he wants it. From the 17, third and 16. Kennedy will have to throw again. And again, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. And again, he goes down inside the 15. And again, it's Steve Strahan and Urban Briley in on the stop. Bill Aldean, the Mustangs are pumped. Two quarterback sacks a moment ago. This year, count them, 53 QB sacks. And Bill Smith breathing a little better right now. One time for Arlington Lamar. As it's fourth and 20 from only the 13-yard line. Ball is going to bounce to near midfield be down at about the 46-yard line. A 46-yard punt. And that's where Aldean will have the football again in Lamar territory. Today's game being carried on radio statewide by Diamond Shamrock Oil Company. Diamond Shamrock has carried the 4 and 5A football playoffs since 1966. Well, Danny Davenport's punt. Not a bad one, considering the situation. But Aldean has tremendous field position from the Lamar 46-yard line. First and 10. Gray wrapped up in the backfield. is now Lamar showing some good defense. For this game, Scott showing us a little bit of everything early on as Pat Carrick made the tackle there. Well, I think, you know, with the defensive squad, that Lamar gets a chance to adjust to what they're seeing out here, as we mentioned early on. This is not a situation that they can really practice for this week. Watch the nice move by Gray. He has it. He comes back the other way. And look, watch him spin around. And his forward motion still picks up a couple of yards. And he should have been 
drop for a loss on that play, but it's still a nice effort by Lamar. Wanted to pitch it to Johnson, but had to hold off because of the defense by Arlington. Lamar, two-yard pickup, second and eight from Lamar's 44. Gray with a long count. Option play. Gray with it. Inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line. Just before he was run out of bounds. Stopped by Billy Coates, 5'10", 165-pound junior corner. For Arlington Lamar. At the conclusion of the game, Scott and I will be selecting the TBG Sports Most Valuable Player for this year's 5A championship game. Saw some numbers there with Eric Gray. You know, another thing about Gray I like, Scott, is the fact that he's a he's a big youngster. Uh, has those long legs, can just eat up yardage with each step. Uh, he's just a tough ball player. It's, it's no wonder he's he's rushed and run for over a thousand yards yeah, and he'll be back next year he's only a junior last year for those of uh, our viewing audience that might have seen the game against odessa permian he played a, a wing back position he was like a split in it was such an outstanding receiver but he also has a great arm and such ability to run with the ball but coach smith decided to employ him at the quarterback position this year and use him as his oxford option quarterback this year in, in, in rushing he's got over a thousand yards and he's also got over a thousand yards passing so he's a one of those fellas that can do just about anything. Both these teams having trouble with Mojo last year. <laughs> Everybody has trouble over the years with Mojo. A little bit short on the measurements, so it'll be third and one from the 36-yard line. Well, actually, officially, I guess you have to call it the 37. You know, last year, the folks watching this ball game, the 5A championship, remember all the outstanding quarterback Doug Womack didn't have a good day that day. Third down conversions, two for three for all day. Here they are. Third one. Big play. And they get it. But Doug Womack, last year, had fumble problems. Nathan Gilbert, by the way, making the tackle there. Womack started a game this year at Syracuse, Scott, and uh, rushed for over 100 yards in that ball game. So he's not a bad quarterback. So Aldi lost a good one, but, but found another good one. Somebody else right to, to put in the spot. Fill the gap. So with the first down, the all Alding Mustangs are down to the 33-yard line. We saw the first down right there for both teams. Each has been able to move the ball a little bit. Down about a minute to play in the quarter. Long count by Gray. Takes the handoff. Will keep the football. Will be piled on down at the 31-yard line. Hit by two or three Arlington Lamar defenders led by Matt Carrick with assistance from Danny Davenport. Scott, you said earlier this Lamar team likes to put 11 men right on the football with the option you can't do that, but I saw three good Arlington Lamar players right there make a good tackle. Well, it's the 11 man to the ball theory, but with the option like this, they've also almost got to go out like a man-to-man -man type of situation in a basketball game or ISO on, on one or two players. You saw Danny Davenport on that last play trying to ISO on him and, and, and just great with the good move on him. Second and eight again from the 31-yard line. Little mix up there defensively for a moment by Arlington Lamar. They position themselves. Davenport tries to run to the left side and didn't get very much help from his left guard, Lee Gaines, who tripped. And when Gaines tripped, that let Garrick and Mike Davis come in and converge on him rather quickly. So down goes Eric Gray and the pickup a little bit short. They'll need to get it down to about the 23, 23 and a half yard line for a first down. And the quarter is now over as we have played 12 minutes of high school football with the Mustangs on top. We'll be right back. The 1990 Texas 5A High School Football Championship is brought to you by your local Pepsi Cola Bottler, the choice of a new generation. Chevy Trucks, more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Hotel accommodations provided by Accommodations Hotels, Sheraton, and Holiday Inn. The destination for the very best in Houston is located across the street from the world-famous Astrodome. Call 1-800-627-6461 for reservations. Well, we've played 12 minutes of football. The first quarter is over here at the Astrodome at Houston. Arlington Lamar going against Aldine. Aldine has the lead, 7-3. Aldine has the football. Scott Murray, your impressions of the first 12 minutes. 
keep it on the ground. That's what they've done for 14 plays, and as a result, they find themselves on top 7 to nothing. You see some of the, the first downs and the rushing yards, 97, no yards passing for Aldine. And, of course, passing yards, uh, for the most part, for Lamar over the course of the year, not this ratio. It's usually a little higher as far as passing yards, or less for passing yards and rushing yards, but look at rushing yards. Six yards is all they got in the first quarter of play. That's really got to be changed around. Third and six from the 29-yard line. Arlington Lamar is into the field. Aldean with the football. Gray, pitch, left side. Option play will not finish. I think I saw a yellow handkerchief go down on the field. First penalty of the day, huh? Well, we made it through one quarter without a flag. This is Bud Alexander. And as you can see, we have a procedure penalty going against the offense. Bud Alexander is the referee. Bill Henson, the umpire. Ed Leisman, Buddy Hoiski. And then, of course, you've got Byron Boston, Tommy Moore, and Marty Martin also in there. Our own Scott Murray wearing an official-like shirt today. <laughs> Wanted to congratulate you on that. That's very stylish. Well, thank you much. You never know when they might need a stuffed substitute. <laughs> to come to officiating, I'll just tell them no thanks. Third and 11. We'll throw the football to his tailback. And again, we've got another play that will not to Let's see if we can get a, a little better look at it. See if it doesn't hit the turf first before he, he latches onto it. See, you see it bounce right up into his hands. So incomplete pass. Great eyes, Scott Murray. I thought it was a completed pass. That'll teach me to keep these binoculars straight right on him. That's why I wear this official shirt. I got you. Well, that's tough for Arlington Lamar now, or tough for Aldi now, because the Mustangs are looking at a situation where they have a long way to go for first down 11. And so they're going to punt it away. And this ball is headed for the end zone. And on the end of the will get it back out to the 20 yard line. As Eric Gray punted it into the end zone. With the Mustangs on top, we'll be right back. And we are back at the Astrodome. You know, 39 years ago this month, long before the city of Arlington ever had Major League Baseball, the city won its only state football championship when Arlington High beat Waco La Vega in 1951. This is the coach of that team, Mayfield Workman. What would it mean, Coach Workman, for either one of these teams to win a state championship today like you did? Well, I, it would mean a great deal for the city of Arlington. We'd love to see it happen. And I, I would certainly love to see it. We've gone long enough. I think we ought to have one. All right. And I believe we have a true champion here. So you're ready to share it today, I'm right? ready to share it. You bet. <laughs> All right. Coach Mayfield Workman, coach of the 1951 Arlington High School champs. All right, Billy, thank you. Marlon Ferguson with a first down carry of about 12 yards pulls Lamar up to the 32-yard line. All being defending. First down play, pass play, incomplete. As Arlington Lamar goes for James Tucker, who again caught 27 passes coming into this one. 4 6 speed, great leaper, but uh, had to leap down and over for that football. For all fans of today's 5A championship game, TVG Sports is making available by telephone or through the mail your own copy of today's game. Call toll free 1 800 933 1 TVG. I'll tell you more about that here after this next play. Third and 10. Kennedy, hand off. Nothing doing. Back down at the 24 yard line. Sniffing that one out quickly was Steve Strahan. I told you earlier we'd be announcing this young man's name all game long. Rated maybe the best defensive lineman in the state. Baylor, AM, Colorado, a host of others looking at him. Coming in with 10 sacks this year. Oh, he's a he's a bad mouth. Yeah, second in the team in tackles with 69. He's got knockdowns. He's number one of the team in knockdowns. Eight player of the game awards this year, Steve. That's incredible for a, especially a defensive player. Not bad. That's about half of the game's play. Option. Kennedy. Over the middle. Deep. Almost intercepted. Incomplete. Great defensive effort that time by Gary Martin. So they find here. 155 pound junior. I believe knocked the ball away as we take a look at it on replay. Yes, we have a better indication of that. Tony Kennedy, a little upset with himself on that pass, but really was just a great defensive effort as Robert Parker is going to have to come in and punt again for 
Arlington Lamar. Fourth and 15 from the 26-yard line. Aldean defense holding tough again. Aldean posting two men deep at about the 43-yard line. Aldean's on into the field. The rush was on. Almost had a block. Low kick. Take it to midfield. And we've got a flag back there. The punter, too. I think it would have brought in the kicker. And that was Will Skinner who ran it back. I believe that you may be right, Scott. Kicker took a lick. And, of course, the Arlington Lamar crowd loves that. Officials conferring now. But you heard the eruption of the Arlington Lamar crowd as, as they thought as Scott did that their kicker had been rough by all yeah. Official call will come momentarily. Good sized crowd here in the Astrodome. I tell you, Steve, they expected about uh, 12,000 people from the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, primarily Arlington, to be down here. Well, we're still waiting to see what the official call by the head referee will be. And I do believe that they're going to have to punt it over again. And they never, the officials never looked over at us and let us know. Let's take another look at it. You decide for yourself. The kicks away. Oh, I don't know. Well, I know this, it was a great acting job. <laughs> it's tough to see from that angle if he caught him or not with the feet. All right, Partridge will punt away again, standing back at his 15, and again, double receivers, twin set, back at about the 40-yard line now for Aldean. And again, the rush is on, and again, the kick is on. And again, Partridge goes down. Now they're saying that he got a piece of the ball. The officials back for the punter. Back near Partridge was saying that he got a piece of the football. So there's no flag. Gary Martins fielded the football, and uh, let's see if he deflects the football at all. I don't know if he'll go out of the frame before we get a chance to see it. Yeah, that's tough because I didn't see it waver one way or the other. So you see Partridge get down again, and we see the concern of any pitch in the sideline. But they say deflected the ball, so it is not roughing the, the kicker. Well, they're a little closer than we are, so I guess we'll go along with it. Holding, leading Lamar. 7-3 with 10-21 to play in the second quarter. And back to play we go from the 48-yard line. All day for the football and slashed and smashed immediately is Eric Bray by Matt Carrick, the left end, and the right tackle, Mike Davis, who had quickly come over. And so Bray doesn't get much on that play. Just a little bit. Takes it up past midfield. And it'll bring up second down and nine. So a pickup really of about a yard. Aldean with, again, that 7-0 lead. Gray with Davis and Derek Johnson both in the lineup. Makes the handoff. Swarmed by Arlington Lamar. Mike Davis, 6'2", pound junior, right tackle. Makes the stop. There's a look at him. Good, hard, solid. Young football player does well, I'm told, in the weight room. Back off the front line. Lamar seems to be playing back a little, almost like a, a, a prevent defense of sorts. Playing back off the off the line a couple of yards. And you see uh, uh, Carrick, Matt Carrick, almost looks like a rover in there, going back and forth to the strong side, whatever it turns out to be for Aldi. Big third down play for Aldi. Gray looks over the defensive pattern, shown by Arlington Lamar. Hands the football off, straight ahead. Fighting for the first down and not getting it. Derek Johnson. You haven't seen much from Johnson early on in this ballgame as Reggie Davis has got most of the load. Carl Mitchell makes the tackle there. But again, it was a little bit shy of the first down. Bill Aldean will have to pump the football now. No, they will not. They are going to go for it. I think so. Fourth and two from the 43-yard line. Arlington Lamar's territory. High formation. Gray gets the first down and then some. Inside the 35-yard line. Matt Carrick, the left end, making the tackle. Boy, Scott, you've got to have confidence in your offense in a situation like that. Apparently, 
Bill Smith does. Greg is so good at hiding that football. Watch him delay like it's a good And look, he just stands back there, and then he takes off. It's a delay. And then he takes off. It's amazing how he just literally stood there. Gary, he's very, very evasive. Eric can play the finally got it. And he does a super job. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Out inside the 30 to the 29. One of those tackle plays, off tackle plays, being run by Paul Dean, working so well. Johnson, the ball carrier. Let's pause five seconds for our local station to identify themselves. This is TVG Sports. Let's go, defense! Let's go! He's only a sophomore, 5'10", 150 pounder to listen to this. Leads the team with 11 sacks and also has 94 tackles. Just a pick back, pitch back to Johnson and his incredible 4-4 four, four speed. He just legs it down the far sideline, picks up the first down for all day. At seven minutes and 25 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Coach Bill Smith looking on. Around the 22-yard line, all day in the playoff corner of the rushing department. Inside the 20 at about the 18, maybe the 17-yard line, Jonathan Reed of the Vikings makes the tackle. Well, you look, Scott, at these players on the offensive line, and you'd swear you were looking at a college team. Or a professional team, as we said earlier. All right, second and six, again from the 18-yard line. High formation. Davis. To the nine yard line. Oh, is he a little to break down? Jonathan Reed with a little bit of help from his friends. Nathan Gilbert in particular. Trying to bring Davis down. Davis, of course, scoring the first and in fact only touchdown of the game. So look at that, some big guy up close and personal. From a low angle view, you get a chance to see Johnson in action. Or uh, Davis in action. Oh, he is big. 6 2, 2 10. First and goal for the nine. Split backfield now for Aldine. Hello, how do you do? Johnson is really having trouble. Couldn't avoid Jim Brady. Johnson comes in here as the most heralded of the two running backs, but thus far, Davis has done a better job in the bar, which has only allowed 60, what, 67.8 yards rushing per game. A little bit winded. They're trying to stop the Aldine offense. Seldom on the go, breathing heavily. Fighting hard down there in the trenches, no question. Trying to get to the end zone, but unable to do it. Moving to the five-yard line before being pushed down on the far side of the field. Jonathan Reed making the tackle on the play, but Gray picking up more yardage. Gray with over 100 yards rushing last week. In fact, uh, He's had close to or over 100 yards rushing in each of Aldine's four playoff games this year. 24 touchdowns as well. Aldine now with another third down attempt. Just shy of 50% here this afternoon from the Lamar four-yard line. 554 to play. Davis to the three. Fights for the football. Almost lost it. Swarmed by Lamar's defensive front. Brings up fourth down. Mike Davis, Carl Mitchell, the middle linebacker, both doing a super job. Saw Carl Mitchell, number 70. And the clock is rolling with about five and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Amaya on to attempt the field goal. Has seven up this year. A 20-yard effort on the way. A bad snap. Let's see what he gets for the kick. He sliced it through the uprights. So Aldine comes up with a field goal to add to that touchdown. And the Aldine crowd on its feet, appreciative of the offensive display. And uh, the Arlington Loire folks certainly haven't given up either. With the score, 
10 to 3 in favor of Paul Dean. We'll be back right after this message from our local station. Well, the nation's top-ranked team and certainly number one in the state all day in with the seven-point advantage over Lamar. 5'11 play in the second quarter. Scott Murray up here in the booth with me down on the playing surface. Two very tough-minded teams. One to win, and of course, each with great fans. And the scoring drive, Scott, for all day. Nine plays, 80 yards, and didn't take all that long. 26 plays from scrimmage thus far for all day offensively this afternoon. 25 of them on the ground. They lead down in total offense, 145 yards to 46 for Lamar. Well, it's easy to see why Aldine has the lead. Alex Amaya, now with eight field goals and 74 extra points this year. He's bumped, ready to kick things off. There you see the receivers for Arlington Lamar. Troy Stratford is number 80. And 22 is Marlon Ferguson. Stratford to the far side, Ferguson to the near side of your screen. down at about the 27-yard line on the far side, but there's the yellow marker down. Well, we went an entire quarter without seeing any penalties, without any penalty markers, and all of a sudden, Scott, bang, 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 it seems like every other play we see penalty markers, now procedure penalty there. This one going up against Lamar. For a VHS copy of today's game, call this number, 1-800-933-1-TVG. You can use any of the cards shown on the screen. TVG Sports, 1717 West 6th, STE 260, Austin, Texas, 78703. Only $16.95 plus $3 for shipping and handling. Boy Johnson just grabbed him and slug him down like a slab of meat. Johnson leads all day in quarterback sacks this year, has a bundle of them. And he is as tough as they come. He along with Steve Strahan. On the replay, you just see him take a couple of steps sideline, or to the sideline, and then uh, it's one-on-one -on -one with the boy. And the boy won. Up to the 47 yard line. Tony Kennedy, John Lacey, Carl Heathman making the stop for Goldie. He could run. He's got about uh, 750 yards in the year on rushing, and he, this is all done by Kennedy himself. A couple of good moves, and then he just outruns the defenders by Goldie. 5.4 yards per carry when he rushes the football, and he picked up a bunch more on that play. Coming in, 728 yards on the ground. Oh, oh, oh. First and good, number 48. And McCarran tried to throw a block and was unable to do so. He was absolutely sworn. Chris Allen was right there, too. And that'll lead the ball at the 48 yard line. Brings up second down. Each one of these players on both teams, you just saw number 34, Chris Allen, the right end for all the extremely strong. Turned 10 pound seat. Second and 10. Steve Strand with a tremendous hit, and all day it's defense rising to the occasion, and look at the crowd go wild for their team. Well, there's no question, Scott, that the all day defense trying to do the same thing as the offense, and in the giveaway takeaway department, no question, but that all day knows what it's doing. There's Larry Kissam. Watch number four. He picks up the ball, but couldn't see the number of the fellow that Stray has. Now back to live action. Gray will keep. And Gray is almost loose. Dropped at the 32-yard line. But Gray was just... 
just for a moment. Very loose. I thought he might go all the way. Well, that was Strahan that caused the fumble a second ago. Head coach of the Aldi Mustangs, Bill Smith, looking on from the sidelines. Aldi with the lead, 10 to 3, down to 322 to play the half. First and 10 from the Lamar 32 yard line. From the I formation, Gray again. Cuts it back inside, gets up field, and is stopped inside the 20. Arlington Lamar defensively, Nathan Gilbert making the tackle. Eric Ray has done so well in 1990, over 1,000 yards rushing and passing. Ray with a lot of pressure on him before the season began, trying to fill the shoes of Womack, who, of course, was so super and has gone on now to Syracuse. But Gray has handled it very well. In fact, if it weren't for Eric Gray, there would be a loss on Aldean's record. We'll get Scott to talk about that a little later. With our score, Aldean, 10, and 3 for the Vikings. We'll be back after this message from your local station. Arlington with the lead, 10 to 3. Coming up at halftime, Scott and I will recap all the highlights of the first half. Also check with Adrian on the field. Features some great halftime shows from the bands of both teams. First and 10 from the 16. Aldean with it. Davis pounding with those feet. He couldn't go anywhere. I think Arlington Lamar is reading that beer option a little bit better now. And they figure Davis is going to get the football, and he's not fooling him like he did earlier, Scott. Well, you know, every time I think that they've figured it out, then Gray turns him around and, and, and puts a 15-yarder in him. First half stats and the highlights uh, coming up the half, and of course uh, we'll hear from the marching bands of the respective teams here in this the 5A title game for 1990. Interview with Dr. Bailey Marshall and the UIL player of the past. Here's the second and ninth play from the 15. Gray looking for some room to option. Well, Can. Has to keep. Gets him. Nathan Gilbert, six foot, 200 pound junior, nine sacks on the year. Right in, makes the tackle on the play. Gray now looks to the sidelines. Eric Gray has rushed the ball 14 times for over 100 yards in this ball game. We still have over two minutes to play in the first half. Exactly half of the play, Steve. 28 offensive plays on the ground, and he's been involved in 14 as a pitch to keep the ball. Wow. Gray wants to throw this time. Lamar's all over him. Gray avoids several would be tacklers, but then sit from behind and drops at the 10 yard line. You know, I thought he might get away momentarily, but Mike Davis had other ideas. The six foot, 200 pound junior wraps him up from behind. And at the 10 yard line, things bog down. As we see Coach Smith talking with one of his assistants. Alex Zamaya on to attempt another field goal. He already has one under his belt here this afternoon. And Arlington Lamar dodges in another bullet. Looks like they're going to give up three, but that's better than seven. And a 20-yarder. Now we'll try for 27. And it's a 13 the Mustangs up there lead to 10 here in the Astrodome. Holding crowd waving the pop pops there. You know, it looks to me like, Scott, they expect their team to be ahead. I don't see that driving, yelling, screaming enthusiasm that you see with maybe an underdog being ahead. So Holding expects to be leading, I suppose. And with about a minute to play in the half, they are by 10. Well, when you're ranked number one in the state, number one in the nation for the better part of the year, I guess. <laughs> I guess those same things are to be expected. Lamar kind of quiet right now. Their team has uh, been, been ranked uh, well during the course of the year. As we watch the replay of the field goal that put Aldine on top by a score of 13 to 3. It's a massive yellow on the near side of the field. All the folks uh, with their pep rally sweatshirts on from their big pep rally yesterday morning in Lamar. If you said about the 12,000 strong, it's supposed to be on hand with Metro Bikes to the Vikings on this afternoon. But right now, they trail it by 10. All being certainly has had the upper hand, and thanks in part to a quarterback by the name of Eric Gray. Gray with over 100 yards rushing in this ball game here this afternoon. Well, there's 
an in-your-face look at the football as it is kicked, and Stratford will take it again this time at the 15. Here he comes to the near side. Boy, he's got some running room, and is knocked down up here to the 41 of the yard line. Gary Mark Zavaldine makes the tackle of the play. Well, Aldine caps uh, that field goal about to go by a mile. Six plays, 43 yards, took a little over two minutes off the clock. So a mile with a 20, and now a 27-yard field goal. Now, Aldine and Lamar trying to get something going offensively here, but don't have much time. We're down to about the minute mark here in the first half. Aldine has picked up 11 first downs rushing. Just one for Arlington Lamar. Kennedy, pump fakes. Well, this one's going to go deep. Too strong, in fact. As he overthrew his intended receiver down at about the 15-yard line. That was James Tucker, defended by Larry Kissam. Well, Kissam had quite a ball game. Here's Tony Kennedy expressing his, his anger. Pineda, one of his receivers, comes in. Here's another look at it. Just basic pump fake there. Has lots of time. Nice to, nice work with the offensive line, but simply over, overthrows the double coverage. And it was good coverage by Aldean, too. Second and ten now. Kennedy marking those signals. Play action. Right side has the man open. Caught down at the 40-yard line. Tremendous play. I by think that's Chris McGarrahan. The five foot ten inch, 170 pound senior comes up with a fine catch from Kennedy. Most of the talk this year you hear about McGarrahan, which is a blocker for Walters, but he's a pretty little ball player. All of 5'10, 170 pounds, but he'll take on anybody. And what a catch he made. That was a leaping diving catch. Kennedy to throw again. Sideline pass. Pineda caught it. He goes out of bounds at about the 31 yard line. Yadra Williams making the tackle for Aldi. Stop the clock, by the way, with 40 seconds to play in the half. Here's a look at the McGarrahan. That is a beauty. Right at the end of the fingertips and holds on, even though he's losing his balance. Big first down for Arlington Lamar. Chris McGarrahan. Not real tall, not real heavy. Good hands, good blocker. Lamar alive. Kennedy is not. He is formed and he comes back at the 42 yard line. As all day, I tell you, those defenders just come at you in waves. Boy Johnson there, McQuiley there, Strahan wreaking havoc. Chris Allen along the front line as well. Kennedy with nothing to do but hang on to the football and realize he was going to take a look. And he's dropped back at the 40 yard line. Seconds left to go in the half. Let's take a look at that play again. Kennedy has great mobility for a kid that's a 6 1 6 2, but tries to pull away, but was simply uh, not able to get back up. And the finishing touch is put in by uh, Mr. Strahan. Lamar doesn't have any more timeouts. They've just called their last one. You know that we've got a couple of other games being played today. The fifth school 5A semifinal at Texas Stadium at Irving. Your old stopping ground, Scott. Arlington, San Houston, and Marshall. They're scoreless in the first quarter. They certainly have to be the Cinderella team this year. They lost four ball games, 10 and 4, I think, to date. And yet they find themselves in the, the semifinal just a win away from the big school 5A title game. We're a little farther along in our game. Only a minute left here in the second quarter. And as you saw the screen, the Mustangs over the Vikings by 10. Trudeau in Houston. Don't know what the official numbers are, but there are a lot of folks here to see the regular 5A championship between the nation's number one and the state's number two ranked high school football teams. So now Lamar with an opportunity to improve their, their percentages of third down conversions. Saw Kennedy try to get his players out there. He wants to hurry up and get this play over with. As we're down to 28 seconds, Miguel Pineda is coming to the lineup offensively for Arlington Lamar. And now the Lamar crowd on its feet, starting to cheer a little bit. Big play, third and 11. The Vikings need to get it down to the 29-yard line for a first. Kennedy, under pressure, will have to run, and he's down at the 37-yard line. Hit drop by Chris Allen. Vikings get to the line at an awful 
big hurry. Fourth and eight. Maybe the last play of the half. Kennedy is going to be sacked. Back in the fourth and seven yard line. And again, Aldine looks super impressive, but there's a flag down. Boy, Scott, maybe I should have said there's three or four flags down. They're all over the place. They certainly are. I'm curious to know what the one uh, downfield is. Back up uh, around the, the first down marker. There's still four seconds left on the clock while we try to determine what, uh, what the meaning of the markers are. Offensively, you know, defensively, we knew that they moved the football and scored points. We held them to 13. Uh, we're not make, converting third downs. We haven't, we haven't consistently developed anything offensively. And if we don't get something done offensively, we're in trouble. Eddie, this is the first time all year you've been down at halftime. Well, you know, we're not playing well. We, we've turned the ball over. Uh, we haven't got any consistency on offense. Uh, we knew they, they could move the football, but there's no reason we don't move the football either, and we're just doing a poor job offensively right now. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Eddie Peach now across the field to Ken Rodriguez. Ken? Coach uh, Bill Smith, uh, is uh, Lamar's offensive line as tough as you expected? Yes, they're a very good offensive line. They're coming off out there. It's tough to control that line of scrimmage. What are you going to tell your team at the halftime? Uh, we played a half. we got a half to go. Your uh, team seemed real cool coming out, and they're playing real cool. Is that a reflection of their coach? No, I don't know about that. There's, things are not cool on that field. There's two good football teams playing out there. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank Back you. to you upstairs. Well, there's no question about it. You look at the two coaches, uh, one ecstatic, one not happy at all. And, uh, Scott, I kind of got the impression that uh, as good as that Arlington Lamar offensive line is right now, the Aldi coach, Bill Smith, is just pleased that his team is doing dominating offensively. With the score again, 13 to 3 in favor of Aldi. We'll be right back after this message from our local station. Good afternoon. Well, we are back at halftime, and we've seen the first 24 minutes of football played here on the Astrodome surface mostly belong to the nation's top-ranked football team, Aldine. But certainly, Lamar has the comeback capabilities, as it were. Scott Murray and I here in the Astrodome up in the press box. Glad you're with us. Exciting ball game. Scott, your analysis of the first 24 minutes. I think Eddie Peach summed it up best. The offensive unit of, of Lamar has not done anything in the first half, and as a result, they trail 13-3. That's, that's it in a nutshell. Are you surprised that uh, Aldean, with that highly touted offense, although they're getting points on the board, they are getting great field position, but it's the Aldean defense that has looked so impressive. They have looked good. I, 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 I'm a little surprised that that Lamar has not been able to run the ball. Not the fact that they haven't scored, but the fact that they haven't allowed the... Uh, the offensive unit to, to take the ball down the field and, and, and at least retain possession for more than just three downs and then having to punt. I'm, I'm, I'm really very surprised at that. You know, another key point in this ball game today, without question, Aldean's young quarterback, Eric Gray. This guy has already rushed for over 100 yards here this afternoon. Uh, his option game is very good. He'll wait until the last second to decide whether to pitch or keep. If he keeps, he gets the yardage. If he pitches, he does a good job, too. He's He's been almost impossible to stop. He really has. He's very impressive. Uh, he's a, a, an outstanding ball player last year. I remember as a, as a wing backer, as a split end playing off uh, almost like a lonely end of sorts, just kind of uh, a slant back last year. He was ver very impressive, and that was only as a sophomore. And now here as a junior, Coach Bill Smith saying, I think this kid's got the tools not only as a receiver, but as, a, as, a, as an option quarterback to run and pass the ball. And although he's only about 37, 38% passing this year, 
you, you've seen here this afternoon, just in one half of football, what he can do when he runs with the ball. And he's just been most, most impressive. Coach Smith, glad he's going to be back next year, <laughs> For too. Sure. Let's go down to the playing surface now, where Adrian Karsten of ESPN is standing by with some thoughts. Thank you very much, Steve. I'll tell you what, you know, we heard both coaches say before the ball game, yes, they were concerned about Sean Walters on the LD side. They all said that this game was going to be won or lost right at the line of scrimmage. Well, so far, Aldean is winning that battle. The result, as we heard Bill Coates talk about with Coach Beach, is they are down at halftime for the first time this year. This is not a situation that they are used to. What's going to happen in the second half? Well, an offensive line that averages 255 pounds for playing indoors this afternoon, how long can they last? Aldean has got the speed outside. The Lamar defensive line now starting to catch a little bit. They're sitting on their heels. That's all the Aldean offensive line needs to start pushing them around. Let's go back upstairs right now to Steve Fallon and see what happens there. All right, and in just a few moments, with the Mustangs on top, we'll be right back. We have a poll being conducted right now as we're at halftime here in the Astrodome with Aldean leading Lamar by the score of 13 to 3. It is a 1-900 poll. We have a number for you to take a look at. Uh, that is the toll-free number to call as we take a look at the top five high school players in the state of Texas. You are to vote for one of those five. Five outstanding players in the state of Texas in 1990 in high school football. And again, you call 1-900-420-5333. Now, the calls are 95 cents per call. And please get your parents' permission to make the phone call. And you can call as many times as you like. Let's go back down to the field now, the playing surface with Adrian Carson. Thanks very much, Steve. You know, one of the things that makes Texas high school football so big is what's going on right here behind me. The 180 members strong, pride of Lamar. Half the people in the stands here, close to half the people, maybe here not to watch your sons play football, but to watch your son or daughter in the band. Let's take a listen. after this message from our local station. Welcome back to the Texas 5A State High School Football Championship game. You know, Texas high school football has made several headlines this past year, some positive, some negative. So we took the opportunity to discuss all of this attention with Dr. Bailey Marshall, Executive Director of the University Interscholastic League. Texas high school football, a nationwide reputation not exceeded by any other states in attendance, rankings, or players. 
But 1990 brought a lot of attention to Texas high school football because of rules violations, court cases, and the publication of a book which has been on the bestseller list for weeks. What we have found uh, is that we're really not having any more violations. We've uh, I've responded to a sports writer who called and asked me, are we having a lot more violations this year? And I, my response was that, no, we're not having any more violations, but we're having about 200% more publicity because the teams that have been involved are high-profile uh, teams. And Two of the high-profile teams who have been penalized are previous 5A state champions. No one likes to see anybody penalized. We wish no one ever violated rule, and I'm, I'll assure you that our state executive committees would rather not penalize anybody. But if you have rules, uh, you have to enforce those rules. Also drawing attention to the 1990 Texas football season is the division between big 5A schools and regular 5A schools during playoffs. The general response is that we've had uh, back from the uh, public schools uh, is that uh, uh, it keeps more people involved in the playoffs and all. Uh, I'm not sure that was the reason why it was designed was just to keep more people involved. Uh, the reason it was designed was from an equity purpose uh, to see that the small schools didn't have to compete against the large schools in the playoffs. Dividing up regular 5A schools and big 5A schools in playoffs is not accomplishing what it was designed to do. Ironically, eight of the top ten teams were in the regular 5A division. It was a trial and experiment. Uh, we've had mixed reactions from the fans, and one guy wrote in and said he couldn't stay up. He didn't know who was playing who. He always stayed up with the teams in the playoffs. So, uh, But generally speaking, the schools have been uh, uh, pretty well pleased with it, is what I understand. This split of the 5A division will be evaluated in January, and recommendations to change, modify, or keep things the same will be made. We'll continue our conversation with Dr. Marshall next week during the big school 5A championship. At halftime, the Aldean Mustangs 13, Lamar Vikings 3. We'll be right back after this message from our local station. Welcome back to the Texas 5A State High School Football Championship. You know, every Friday afternoon, the 150 members of this band at Aldean High strut and strut their stuff right through the hallways. And let me tell you from first-hand experience, it gets loud. Under the direction of Jeff Laird. Let's listen.
Welcome back to the Texas 5A State Championship. You know, each year we take a few minutes to take a look back at one of the participants from the University Interscholastic League. Well, this year we caught up with Donnie Little, formerly played for the Texas Longhorns and with the CFL Rough Riders. It was 1977, and Dickinson High School defeats Brownwood High School to claim the 3A High School Championship. Donnie Little was a Dickinson senior that year and remembers how he felt winning the championship. What a great feeling that was, because um, a year or two before that, our school wasn't really recognized for football. And the last two years, the junior and senior year, which is the only years I played high school football, is um, we, we won our district both years, but my last year, my senior year, we won state, and that's a super feeling. And Donnie would become very familiar with that super feeling he got from winning. After high school, Donnie accepted a scholarship and played with Fred Akers for the University of Texas. Although every season wasn't a winning one, Donnie and the 81 Longhorn team played Alabama in the Cotton Bowl his senior year, defeating Alabama 14 to 12. Donnie was able to experience that super feeling again. Leaving Austin, Donnie wanted to continue playing football and joined the Ottawa Rough Riders in the Canadian League. Actually, when I went to Canada, I was just kind of grooming myself to come back to the States. And um, the USFL was out, but I was under contract, and I had to uh, uphold my contract. I played three, three and a half years over there, and uh, that's when I tore up my knee. I had a reconstructive of my knee, and, and after that surgery, I decided to retire from football. Donnie returned to Austin and completed his degree in education. He now teaches and coaches at St. Stephen's High School in Austin. Fortunate for me and unfortunate that I got hurt on the positive side that it made me take a look at myself that, you know, playing football, very few people have a guaranteed contract. Um, when I got hurt, I realized that I needed um, something to fall on. And a degree, you know, you got to have, you got to start somewhere. But to have that degree, no one can take that from you. Now working with his students is as important as playing football used to be. You have kids coming to you and asking you questions about life, about making decisions about what school they want to go to. Um, also teaching kids who's never played football at this level, the, just teaching them the fundamentals of, uh, any, of any sport. And watching that kid grow and work at it, to me, that's the thrill of coaching. Uh, everybody can't be an Earl Campbell and, you know, an O.J. Simpson, but if they just go out and work hard at it, and you may not win all the time, but you give it your best, then they're happy, and they can carry that same attitude off the field. And as a coach, what about that super feeling of winning? Well, we uh, completed the season at 8-1, and, and we won our uh, back-to-back seasons. Uh, last year, we won the uh, SPC, and that's the Southwest Preparatory Conference for private schools, and we won it again this year, and it's a super feeling. Donnie Little, one of the big names that come out of Texas high school football. We'll be back to take a look at some of the big names that came out of the first half after we take this break.